Good morning, good morning. Once again, Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church family and friends. It's your boy, Pastor Rod, once again. Uh, about to let's dive into this word today and uh, see what the Lord has for us today. Um, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day and opportunity, dear Lord, to just see another day that was not promised to us. But Lord, we know that you are God and you are God alone. We thank you for still being on the throne, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done all you're doing and what you're going to do, Lord. Lord, thank you for your protection even during this pandemic. Thank you for your sustainability, your, your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for just being God. Lord, we ask that you give us preaching power now, Heavenly Father. Let your word go forth, Heavenly Father. And your word says that it would not come back to us void, to you void. Thank you right now, Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, turn with me, if you will, to 1 Samuel. Actually, 2 Samuel, chapter number 23. Chapter number 23. Uh, meet me at verse number 11. Verse number 11. And uh, I'll be reading from the King James word, uh, version. These are the last last words of uh, King David. Amen. These come from King David. These, these last words. It says, And after him was Shema, the son of Aji, the Herorite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it, and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. I want to speak for a few moments as the Lord shall guide, and from these words, I'm going to talk about it's time to stand in the middle of it. Stand in the middle of it. I know we're going through some some tough and trying times. 2020 has been a year like none other. Um, I don't know about you, but we've all been, some of us been through some storms in 2020, not just the pandemic, but some been through unemployments and layoffs and divorces and everything else that, that can hinder your mind, that gets into your spirit, that, 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 that makes life uh, seem unbearable. But there comes a time in life, especially the life of a believer, where you got to just sit back and reflect on the goodness of the Lord anyway. God, even in the midst of everything that some folks got going on, God is still God. God has still been protecting. God has still been providing. God has still been sustaining. God has still been covering. And uh, even though times appear to be tough and times look tough, God is still still on the throne. God is still in charge. God is still God. So now you got a time, you had to come to a time where you just got to take a stand and stand in the middle of it. I, I know, I know there's, there's storms out there. There's, there's the, down California got fires going on all over the place and there's all kind of things happening. But you got to understand that um, uh, 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 you, you got to make a stand for the Lord. If you are a Christian, if you are a believer, no matter how tough times get, no matter how hard things seem to be, you got to stand on something. Uh, granddaddy used to tell me all the time that if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yes, and so standing on the word of God, if you stand on the word of God, there's no more sure foundation than the word of God. And right here in this dynamic text, we find a great warrior by the name of Shema. He was standing in the field of the Philistines that the Philistines had taken and chased God's people off of their own property. The Bible tells us that it was a fertile piece of property that produced lentils. And this great warrior by the name of Shema stood his ground against the Philistines. Let me pause parenthetically and say, I don't uh, I don't know why the Lord placed this on, on my heart this week to preach, but during this uncertain time, this time of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, the times of uh, racial injustice, the time of police brutality, the time of a pandemic, the Lord placed this on me and they said that there comes a time when you got to just stand your ground. You got to stand your ground. And you once you stand your ground, stand on fertile ground. The Bible has always been fertile property. The Bible has always been fertile ground. The Bible has always been the solid foundation. And the Bible should be what we should be standing on today. Because we got to understand that none of this has taken God by surprise. 
God knew this thing was coming. God knew something was coming down the pipe because God allowed it. Like I said, like I said a while ago, that one of my favorite scriptures, John chapter 16, round about verse 33, where the Bible says that in this world you will have tribulation, which means you will have trouble. But on the B clause of that, God says, but be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. What, but what basically John was telling us then that Jesus was telling through John then was stand your ground. Stand even in the middle of something that's look uncertain. Stand anyway and watch what God does. Exodus even tells us stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Just stand. You got to come to the point where we got to stand. And watch this. Watch this. Uh, Shema stood. In the face of uncertainty, he stood in the face of problems. He stood in the face of the enemy and he stood on the word of God. The Bible says this, that, 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 that he, uh, he stood to defend what God had promised and given to his people. He fought and killed the Philistines and God blessed him to win a great battle. We see, we have to learn how to stand still, brothers and sisters. And all, because all too often we tend to run because it appears as though our battles, our situations, our problems are too big. But I heard somebody say a long time ago, there is nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Mom and daddy told me there's nothing too hard for God. And as I've been walking this Christian walk, I found out there is nothing that's too hard for God. When we when we look at it, we get the impression that we'll be defeated because we're looking at a situation through fleshly eyes. We don't look at through spiritual eyes. We don't look at and see it how God see it. Uh, it it looks like we outnumbered. It it looks like the situation ain't gonna never end. But as a child of God, you have to get to the point where we stop telling God how big our problems are and start telling our problems how big our God is. Many problems we have in our lives are due to the fact that, 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 that we ran many of our hardships and heartaches because we ran from them. Our problem looked too big for us to handle, but we forget it's too big for us, but it's just right for God. The text says Shema stood in the middle of it and was victorious. He stood in the middle of the field, and we have to learn how to stand in the middle, even though we might be outnumbered. Stand in the middle of it. Don't tuck your tail. Don't run. Stand in the middle of it. And I, 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 I like I said earlier about the Black Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, I, I don't fault them people for going out there and taking a stand. And taking a stand. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not justifying the looters and all that other stuff. But that. But but taking a stand to protest. Uh, racial injustice and, and police brutality, you got to come to a point where you take a stand. You got to take a stand. And and, and we got to, I, I, I appreciate what the athletes are doing and I appreciate what some of the actors are doing, getting out there, getting our voices heard. Your voice will get heard when you take a stand. You can take a stand. This great warrior understood the importance of his position. He went out to the middle of the field, to the middle of the fight of the battle. But what I understood about this text uh, is that when you stand in the middle of it, you got to understand that middle way is, ha is at the halfway point. You, when you're in the middle of something, you're too far to turn back, but you're just close enough to the finish. If you are in the middle of a storm, you halfway in and you're halfway out. The distance in front of you equals the distance that's behind you. Mm. It doesn't make sense to retreat because it's the same distance to go ahead and advance as it is to go backwards. When we're going through, we, we stay too close to the safety net. That's what we like. We like to be comfortable. But if you if you get comfortable, that means you, 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 you don't need God because you're too comfortable. God, so God has to upset your situation and upset your position so you can lean more on him. We see we like to position ourselves too close to the retreat line. We we must be like Shema and trust God anyhow. We got to tell God we will stand in the middle of it. We got to allow God to fight our battles because we we we, we never said stay stay at home. He said stand still. He said he didn't say he didn't say stand still and see. Huh? Stand your ground. Stand your position and see the salvation of the Lord. 
Because what I found out is that the Lord always, always, always show up in the middle of your struggle. He don't show up at the beginning, but he likes to show up in the middle. We as Christians think that because we are, we are now saved that we are struggle free, but that's not all. No, that's not how life is. Uh, if, if Mark called Jesus the suffering servant and God calls us to be Jesus or Christ like, don't you think we're going to suffer? We are going to suffer. So don't don't get too high, high and mighty. The Bible says don't think too highly of yourself than you ought to because you go suffer. You go suffer. And, and see, watch this. We got to understand uh, God comes in the middle of his struggle. This new the, uh, new age prosperity preacher teaches that we're supposed to have all this money and we're supposed to have all these big houses. We're supposed to drive Mercedes and Bentleys and BMWs. We're not supposed to have any struggles because we are anointed by God. So we, we should have some anointed swag or something. But let me see if I can be real this morning. Jesus struggled. If Jesus struggled, who are we to think we're not going to struggle? You don't believe me? I got I got Bible to back me up. The Bible says in the garden, he prayed so earnestly that he began to sweat as if he was drops of blood. He began to struggle in the garden. He knew what awaited him on Golgotha, so he prayed earnestly and his sweat turned to blood. Jesus was struggling. He was struggling with what he had to do. But it was in the middle of the struggle that God dispatched an angel to comfort his son. It was not at the beginning, but it was after Jesus had struggled for a while. In the middle of it, God dispatched an angel to comfort him. Yeah, see, uh, you don't believe me? He's in the middle of your struggle. I, I, I can tell you because I remember in Mark chapter 6, uh, round about verse 47, it says, When even was come, the ship was in the middle of the sea, and he alone was on the land. And the text says that a storm arose out in the water and it was about 3 to 6 a.m. on the fourth watch that Jesus walked out on the water in the middle of the disciples' struggle as they were in the storm trying to save their boat. Jesus did not show up prior to the storm. Jesus did not uh, say a storm is on the way and let me hurry and get to the boys. He did not wait for the disciples to get close to the shore where they would now start feeling safe. No, Jesus showed up. In the middle of the struggle. They were in the middle of the lake. Too far, too far forward to turn back. Too far from the shore ahead to feel safe. They were in the middle. See, sometimes when it seems like you are out there on your own, when you hit that point where there's no turning back, after you have struggled to right the ship, just when you look back and determine there's no going back, when you look ahead and you realize it's still too far from safety, at that point, you will realize that you are right in the right position in the middle of it for Jesus to show up. At the point you begin to realize, I can't do this on my own. At the point you understand your strength is not sufficient. The point you realize that you are too far to feel safe, right there in the middle of it, right in the middle of your struggle, Jesus will show up. Let me see if I can tell you. Let me let me, let me see if I let me let me see if I, 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 I got Bible to back it up. I got Bible. Jesus can be found even in the middle of your mess. You don't believe me? Luke chapter 5, verse 19. It says, And when they could not find by what way by might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the top of the roof and let him down through the tiling with, 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 with his couch in the middle of the crowd with Jesus. No matter what you're going through, we can find God right in the middle of any mess. We find ourselves in. We find this paralyzed man in the text. He was brought to Jesus. We find Jesus sitting down with the Pharisees and the doctors of the law. And the power of God was moving in an extraordinary way. Jesus was with them and he was hosting the big dogs, if you will. <laughs> the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus was right in there and they was questioning Jesus. The religious leaders of that day and age, we, we were reminded that they came out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And this because this was a big event. You had to be somebody to have been in that particular setting on that particular occasion. Because Jesus was about to show them in the middle of a mess his power. This paralyzed man carried by his friends, and they showed up. The crowd was thick. So they climbed up to the roof and began to tear the man's roof off and lower their friend down in the middle of the crowd. 
What a mess that be. They climbed the ropes, removed the towels, causing property damage. The noise, the commotion of those on the inside was wondering what was going on. Is it, isn't it good to know that we can find God right smack in the middle of whatever mess we find ourselves in? Christ is in the middle. Miracles can be found in a mess. All you have to do is reach out and take hold of him. Believe that he is there and he will help you. Boy, I almost feel like preaching this morning. Like the lame man, they had to lower him down. He did not stay on the roof for his healing. See, because oftentimes, sometimes we too high for God to bless us. Sometimes we too high to receive miracles. Sometimes we too high to even get out of our own mess. We have to be lowered down. Boy, can I preach it like I'm feeling? Sometimes we have to be knocked down so God can bless you. We have to come down off our high house. We have to be humble and we have to be lowered through all of our mess. It, 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 that's where we find Jesus. Uh, you find when, when, when you're down on your knees, I, I heard somebody say you're in the power position. You're in the power when you're down low. When, you, when, 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 when your spirit is down low, when, you, when you're prostrate on the floor, when you're prostrate in the sanctuary, when you're prostrate in your room, when you're brought down low, you're now in your power position. Mm, you, you, we, 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 we too high, so God had, they had to lower the man down so he could be lowered down for, for his miracle. Uh, but I need to tell somebody, in, in spite of what we're going through, in spite of what we're going through, even when the fire get too hot, just hold on a little while longer and maybe you've never been there you know maybe maybe you super saved and your life just been filled with 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 greatness and you blessed and you highly favored and you ain't never had no struggle with this little message right here it ain't it ain't for you today this message is for that i'm trying to keep it 100 today this message is for those of us who who find out found ourselves in some storms and found ourselves in some some struggles and some things we were going through and we needed god desperately i don't know about you the way the way the economy looks and the way the world looks today we we need god desperately today we need him desperately and that's where you can find god right in the middle of your mess. You don't believe me like I told you. I got plenty of Bible to back me up. Daniel chapter 3 verse 25. And the, the text says. Uh, then Nebuchadnezzar answered and said. Lo I see four. Men loose walking in the middle of the fire. They have no hurt. The form of the fourth. Is like the son of God. And I don't know about you, but uh, you know, I, as I matriculated through Sunday school uh, and matriculated through church all my all my life, pretty much, I always wondered how could Nebuchadnezzar know what the Son of God looked like? And come on, go ahead, go ahead. I I wait. How would he know what the Son of God looked like? Well, he knew what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego looked like, but the fourth one in the five. Could only be the Son of God. <laughs> it, I mean, it just it just dawned on Nebuchadnezzar that that fourth one in there that was standing in the middle of him with him could only be the Son of God because Nebuchadnezzar thought in his mind, who's the only one can take heat out of fire? Who else could take the hot out of the heat? Who else can take the burn out of the brimstone? Can't nobody do it but Jesus. I heard them old. Folks used to say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Jesus was standing in the middle of the fire. He was standing in the middle of the fire with, 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 with the Hebrew boys. Boy, when I can't take heat, when I can't take the heat, when I can't take the pressure, I got somebody I can go to. I just bow my head and start praying, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thy hand from me, whether shall I go? Because he promised never to leave me, nor forsake me. Boy, I got somebody I go to. I don't know. Do you got somebody you can go to today? I got somebody that I can go to. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're still going through, if you're still going through, let this little Easter speech help you today. Because God will be right there in the middle of it. The Lord is always on our side I got one more to tell you when the Bible says when they took him up on a hill called Calvary they set him in the middle of two thieves what I tell you Jesus is always 
in the middle of it. It said it between two thieves. The one thief said that if you be the son of God, get yourself down and get us down. But the other one said, when you enter your kingdom, remember me. When you get to your throne, remember me. And Jesus says, from this day forward, you shall be with me in paradise. Not before they put him on the cross, but while he was in the middle of his death sentence, Jesus looked at the, the thief on the cross and said, from this day forward, you shall be with me in paradise. Jesus showed up in the middle of his storm. And I don't know about you, and I don't know about what you're going through today, but Jesus is in the middle of your storm. He'll show up, and not only will he show up, I heard him say he'll show out, because Jesus shows his power in the midst of our struggles. Jesus shows his power in the midst of a pandemic. Jesus shows his power in the midst of a in the midst of the worst economy since the Great Depression. Jesus shows his power. Jesus is still worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. God is so worthy. He's still worthy. In spite of what it looks like. In spite of what it feels like. In spite of it all. Jesus will show up and show out in the middle of it. I got to leave y'all right here. But Jesus, when he was on the cross... He was in the middle of even his own death sentence. But he wound up giving God praise anyway. He, he, he wound up giving God praise anyway. Because when he got to the sixth word, it said, it is finished. The debt that we owe has been paid in full. The debt that I owe is personal to me. The debt that I owe. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. He died for my sins. But not only that, he died for your sins too. Jesus died for every sin you ever committed. Jesus died for every sin you ever thought about committing. Jesus died for every sin that some of us still commit. Jesus died. Jesus says, I got that covered. It's not a, not a license to continue sinning. But Jesus said, when you fall. I'll be there to pick you up. And I, 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 I finally, my brothers and sisters, I got to leave y'all with this. Because this is one of the many reasons why we should praise him while we're in the middle of it. Because mama taught me a long time ago, my mama taught me a long time ago, that universal number that you can get to, to call Jesus. No, you don't have to call 911. No, you don't have to call 411 for the information. All you got to do is dial 111. It's the universal spiritual number that goes straight to heaven. Even if you've been disconnected from God, you can still dial 111. Even if you've been locked out by guilt and shame, you can still dial 111. Even if you move so far away from God that you can't get a signal through, if you dial 111, an angel of mercy will come in the middle of it. Catch a Roman call and deliver it right to heaven. 111 is a Wi Fi that never goes out. It's a connection that never goes down because 2,000 years ago, when the world set up an emergency call, it said, Save us from our sins. God sent prophet after prophet, but every message went unanswered. Then God decided to stop calling. He sent his only begotten son whose name was Jesus. He came to live right in the middle of me, but they still didn't get the message. He healed the sick. He raised the dead in the middle of them, but they didn't get the message. But when they died on Calvary, when they died on Calvary, somebody out there shouted, surely he must be the son of God. Why should you praise him in the middle of it? Because on that one dark Friday, the first black Friday, 
Jesus died for your sins and mine. But I'm so glad that he didn't stay there. Because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. He got saving power, wonder working power, pandemic healing power. He got sustaining power. He got all power in his hand. I I gotta leave you right here. I gotta go. I gotta go. I know this is this is my fourth close, but I gotta go right here. Somebody said back in the day we used to sing, we used to sing the song at Vacation Bible School. It used to go like he got the whole world in his hands. He got you and me, brother, in his hands. He got mama and daddy in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. As long as you're in the hands of Jesus. The Bible says he got all power in his hands. And if you are in his hands, he got the power to sustain you. He got the power to keep you. He got the power to heal you. He got all power in his hands. Yes, Lord, thank you for having all power. Thank you for having forgiven power. Thank you for saving power. Thank you for healing power. Lord, I thank you that you got all power in your hands. God bless you today. God bless you today. Just take a stand. Stand in the middle of it. Stand in the middle of it. And watch Jesus show up and show out. God bless you. May God keep you. Uh, let's say a prayer for Deacon Ward and, and the Ward Northern family. Say, not only let's say a prayer for Sister uh, Addie Heidelberg, but let's also say happy birthday to Sister Heidelberg. She had a birthday this week. God bless you, Sister Heidelberg. Let's pray for Mother Davenport, Sister Davenport. Let's pray for them. God bless you. Let's pray for the whole Mount Hermon family. Pray for me as I pray for you, and let us watch God change things. We got to get this world back up on prayer. We got to get, we got to put God back into places we we let him go away. We put him out. We got to put God back in his rightful place. God bless you today. May God keep you today. Pray for me as I pray for you. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.